most leaders should, should uh, take a page from Brian Stevenson, uh, who is the founder of the Equal Justice Initiative, which is based in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, has been working on uh, the wrongful incarceration of individuals for 30 years in his work and either listen to his TED talk or um, read his book and so forth. Number one, just as a backdrop. Number two, I would say out of that and my conversations with him as being, I think, probably one of the foremost leaders in this space is that we have to be very, very honest and unabashedly truthful and intentional about what our outcomes are uh, and what the um, pathway has been and what it needs to be. And as leaders, I think we look for the, the least amount of resistance to get the desired outcome. And that's not going to help move this conversation forward, whether it be organizationally, uh, or whether it be politically or any way um, in the abstract that I can think about. If we are not honest and truthful about um, race and the uh, challenge it has been in this nation since its inception, then we have a very little chance of moving our, our corporations uh, and organizations and our communities further along. We have to talk about uh, the inequalities that exist, why they exist, how they started, and that's why the history of being very truthful about that um, is very important because most people don't know the truth. As I was just saying earlier, you know, it's been sanitized and, uh, you know, I'll give you for instance, we just celebrated for the first time in Montgomery's history Indigenous Peoples Day. And I have questioned people saying, well, why are you doing that? And what does all this mean? <laughs> and, you know, all, all this other stuff. And one example I gave, and it's a, it was a supporter, and they kind of thought that that was um, too controversial, right? So why was I getting involved in that space? And I just talked, I just said, well, let's talk about the trail of tears. You, we're taught about it as a trail of tears. I said, what would we call it now? Would we call it a genocide? I said, what would we call the trail of tears now? And I said, we have to think about the history and the way that we have romanticized a lot of things in this country that have led to where we are right now. And so when we think about talking about race within our organization as leaders, I think the more transparent, the more truthful, and the more honest we can be, the better results we will get. And you have to give people the space to say, hey, that's not me, or that's not what I meant, or that's not what I'm trying to do. And you have to give other people the space to say, but this is how it can be perceived, and this is how it's taken. So now, okay, I've heard this side and that side, and then maybe one in the middle. Now, how do we kind of work to move forward? I think one is to acknowledge that there may be an ignorance uh, around uh, race in, this, in an organization or in any entity because there's an ignorance around race in this country. So it's certainly understood, but one shouldn't be shamed or banished to the dungeon, you know, because of that. You know, every, every mistake that is made is not, to me, a fireable offense. Every mistake that is made it, it, between someone who looks a little different or sounds a little different is not one that has malicious intent. So we have to be able to learn from those uh, issues as well and give people the space as leaders in our organization to be truthful, to be honest, but also learn from them so that people do feel more comfortable talking about it. If there's one thing that's come out to me probably since the civil unrest uh, in this nation, and, and, I, and I applaud the leaders of, who have protested uh, across this nation. I, I've, I've had the opportunity to listen to John Lewis and uh, Mrs. King and many others who led these movements at a different time. And I understand from them what was behind their reason for protest. So when I think about what's happened in various cities, including mine, I respect it because sometimes as political leaders and as business leaders, we don't get the picture until someone's yelling. And you don't get the picture when people are talking or they're writing. It is not until someone is banging that the message kind of becomes heard. It should not be that way for us as leaders, but sometimes it gets that way. 
So I think to, to summarize my point, as leaders in this time around race and reconciliation, we have to make sure that we're allowing people the space to learn, allowing people the space to express themselves and their uh, experiences, and then chart out ways that we can improve just as we're trying to do here at Owen and as we're trying to do in my community in Montgomery so that we can be a better community for everyone uh, moving forward. Without that, uh, then we will, we will remain divided and that will increase the stagnation of what we can really do together. And I think that's the, the takeaway for all of us as leaders is to embrace the uncomfortable, is to embrace the, the unknown, and let's be willing to try to uh, make some progress out of that. Understand that progress is never perfect. Understand that progress is never perfect, but progress is movement. Doesn't mean you don't take a step back, doesn't mean you don't take a step to the side and get knocked down, but progress is, move, is moving forward. And I think if we can accept that and kind of wrap our minds around it, then we'll be better uh, as leaders and our organizations and those that we represent and those who we are um, held responsible for will be in a better place as well.